chaps, welcome back to another Spuddy Boy UK video. So if you've clicked on this video, then you're considering to buy Planet Zoo, or you've already bought it and you want to know how it works. But before you buy it, you must make sure that your computer can handle it. I bought my computer from a website called Scans, and I'll leave the link in the description. Anyway, that's for a different video. Today we're going to have a look at the complete basics on getting started in Planet Zoo. These are the beginner tips that I would have liked to have seen when I started this game. So this is the resume button. This is the button you press when you want to resume the game. Now when you first load into Planet Zoo, the first thing you want to do is get onto the career mode and do a few of them. You don't have to do all of them. I just recommend doing a few because they give you the complete tutorial on how to move the camera around, how to place things and how to get used to it. You can either do that or you can watch this video. After you've gotten used to the career mode, I would highly recommend you make a sandbox mode just to see how an empty lot would look. This will give you a chance to build up your zoo without having to worry about money, finances or really looking after your animals very much. That's what I do with Happy Sanctuary because we're all about that happiness here. But then I would recommend that you get started with Franchise because it gives you a more realistic zoo sort of style of gameplay that you'd like. I know it's not for everyone but Sandbox you can make whatever you want but Franchise is more of a progression game. And Challenge, well I haven't really touched Challenge but hey ho if you want to touch it then be my guest to touch it. So for this tutorial we're going to make a new Sandbox zoo. Now we need to select a biome. We could either select a biome and a place, or we could use one of the scenario zoos. But I'd prefer to use a biome, because then you get a full flat area. So I'm going to make a temperate zoo from Europe, because if you hadn't already noticed, I'm from Pakistan. Now, the difficulty refers to animal welfare, staff happiness, guest requirements, educational needs, all of that jazz. And uh, the higher the difficulty, then the harder it is to maintain that different requirement. We're going to name the zoo tutorial and then let's create this bad boy. You will then see a loading screen with Yogi Bear walking in the distance. So once the big boy is finished doing the default Fortnite dances, we will load into the game. So here you go, you have successfully gotten into a sandbox game. Now the controls might seem a little bit intimidating when you first log in, so we'll go through everything step by step. The first thing you're going to want to do, and this is the first thing that I do, is that's pause my game so that I don't lose any money. Obviously we're in sandbox so money isn't really an issue, but if you're starting franchise, definitely pause the game before you do anything. The little buttons to the left are the speed on how fast you want your game to go, so you can have it times one, times two or times three. This helps when you have a steady amount of cash coming in and you just want to keep it going up. The button above the pause button doesn't seem like much, but it's actually a uh, selector. So you can select whatever you want, either by dragging it or by shifting and clicking, and you can delete those. That's quite handy when it comes into building. The shortcut for that is I, and the shortcut for pause is P, and the shortcut for the uh, speed is O. Now we move on to the weather and time button. This is only available in the sandbox mode. In franchise, you'll get a consistent time flow going and you won't be able to change the weather. So beware of that, depending on what biome you wanna choose. For me, I'm gonna set it for 12 o'clock because that gives us the most amount of light for the game. Obviously, for this video, I'm not gonna be changing the weather. Next to the weather button is the toggle free lock mode. All this does is softens the movement of your camera when you're moving. It's only really used when you're making a video and you want to make it look like a, a, a nice scenic pan, but I wouldn't worry using that. Next to that useless button is the redo and undo button. The shortcuts for that is Control and Y for redo and Control and Z for undo. I would recommend using the shortcuts rather than clicking the buttons each time because it just saves a lot of time. Now onto the terrain buttons. So we'll start with the uh, modifying of the terrain, so terraforming. So we will start with pull, the first one on the sculpting option. If you want to increase the size, use the dial to increase it. You can go from 1 to 20. If you want to increase the intensity, how much it's going to increase, I would recommend you do it. I usually, if I'm sculpting, I want to do it around 70 to 80 because then you can get enough sculpting to see a difference, but you can always undo it if you don't like it. This is the same for push, chisel, smooth, roughen, flatten to foundation and flatten to surface. 
The flattening to the foundation literally just flattens everything to one level that your cursor is pointing at. The flatten to surface, I don't really understand it. I believe it flattens it to the surface that slopes it up. I don't really know. I don't really use that one. So I just use flatten to foundation if you wanted to flatten everything to one level. Chiseling, as you'd expect, will just chisel a hole into wherever your cursor is looking. Now onto terrain stamp tool. So this is basically when you want to make a mountain but want to start with a basic sort of skeleton of it. You can make cubes, spheres, cylinders and pyramids and the uh, plus and minus tool indicates whether you want it to be above the ground looking out or if you want to make a ditch or a hole or some sort of that to make some sort of pond or lake and of course you can also change the height and width to make it bigger or smaller depending on how big you want it to be for you so here's what each thing looks like and I know it doesn't look that nice at the moment with the uh, dirt but we'll get to that in a second and if you use the push and pull to sculpting tools and the roughen tools you can make quite nice mountains out of these basic squares spheres pyramids and cylinders now the paint tool this gives you grass dirt stone sand and snow this is not only useful for making your different areas look amazing but it's also used for the habitats when you're building your habitats for your animal. Each animal likes a different amount of different terrain, so I'd bear that in mind when you're building your habitats. Also, you can increase the intensity and the size, just like the other terrain tools. Now, finally, water. You can either use calm water or rough water. It doesn't really make much difference. However, you must make sure that you've done all of the stuff you want to do before that, before you add the water, because when you've added the water, you can't change the terrain of what the water is holding. So I'd make the hole first, make it look nice, and then put the water in so that then you can see how your pond, lake, river, whatever it is, is gonna look. Okay, so now it's time to look at the path system. And much like Planet Coaster and Jurassic World Evolution, both made by Frontier, it is very difficult with the path. I recommend that you put the path in first, then you do the habitat, buildings and all of that, and then you make it look nice. Because if you don't get the path right first time, then the whole thing will mess up. And trust me, that's happened to me loads of times before. I will do a more in-depth video in pathing because I do think it needs its own separate video. So now, let's have a look at the middle of the hot bar. Now all of these different items are going to be very crucial to making your zoo look amazing. So let's start with barriers and I need not tell you what they are for but when you're starting off in Planet Zoo I recommend that you just make a simple rectangular habitat using wood or the concrete one and using a habitat gate to uh, let the keepers in. And that is your starter starter very starter habitat so now let's click onto the habitat icon and if you click on this button up here on filters and then click onto the species you'll be able to see each individual animal and you can see if you press them that will give each animal's required habitat items so say if i was building a red ruffed lemur enclosure i click on the filters and then species and find red ruffed lemur and then that will give you everything that a red ruffed lemur really Ruffin requires. So now onto the nature icon and you can see all the different types of plants and trees and rocks that you that you get to choose from but if you click on the zoopedia if you want to do it for a specific animal and if you click on that animal you can see the biome that they come from and the continent as well and just flip that bad boy into a filter and then you can see exactly what that animal enjoys in their enclosure. This helps massively when trying to sort out the animal's plant needs, because then you get to see what they like and what they really hate. So now onto facilities, and these are all the really, really important bits and bobs that you need to put in your zoo to satisfy your guests and staff. The different icons include exhibits, staff and guest buildings, power supplies, security benches and trash, education, and transport and if that sounded like i was reading that from the top of my head you'd be correct because i don't get this footage whilst i'm recording so now on to construction icon and this is very self-explanatory this gives you all of the different bits and bobs that you want to put around to decorate your your buildings and your zoo in general as you can see there are quite a lot of different items that you can put into your zoo i'd spend some time having a look at them if you're working on sandbox but if you're looking at franchise i would 
wouldn't pay too much attention to them until you get a sufficient amount of income coming in and you're not losing money. I won't go through every individual icon like I did with the facilities, but I will mention this special effects in the bottom left corner. That took me ages to figure out where it was because that gives you all your waterfalls, your fog and your dust particles and it just adds a lot of pizzazz to your habitats when you want to make them better. Now finally onto the blueprints icon. These are all prefab buildings that the Steam Workshop has, you can make and Planet Zoo creates for you and that's pretty much what those three icons are on the left. If you wanted to make a building and then save it to the Steam Workshop you could by grouping it all together every single part and then pressing create new blueprint. Obviously I've made a few fabulous designs in my time playing Planet Zoo. From that classic glass dome to the small tortoise shelter and from wall to corner shop I have it all. Now to the far left corner where you press on the zoo icon. This gives you a zoo overview. Basically you can have a look at the overview for the zoo, the opening hours, the tickets, prices, the uh, animal welfare and the happiness meter in general. And you can also get the finance view uh, where you can see all your finances if you're going down in the gutter like uh, Toys R Us. And um, you can also see your each individual animals that you've got there. You can see all the staff that you've trained and obviously I've trained up loads of them. And these two little greyed out areas are the research ones and the workshop which is what you get with the vet and the mechanic when you put those buildings down. That allows you to progress in the franchise mode. We also have the buildings icon and the education icon. So now we'll head up to the very top left where you see the question mark. And I think you already know what that is. This is pretty much your help guide to help you get started. It will give you a lot of useful information in precise detail. If we head down, you'll get the Zoopedia, which we've talked about before. This has every single animal in the game all put into one sort of book, if you want to call it that. This will help you when putting in a new animal that you haven't put into your zoo before because each individual animal is completely different to the next one which is what I really like about this game it's all in depth and detailed next we have the timeline of the zoo and that will pretty much just work as a notification board say if your animal gets pregnant or if your animal gives birth or if your animal dies it'll log everything into this timeline for you so that's quite handy these red notifications here are pretty much what you'll get if something's wrong in your zoo. At the moment, because we've got an empty zoo, they're saying you need some stuff in your zoo to be able to work. So finally, in the bottom bottom left hand corner, you'll see a little dial or radar, whatever you want to call it. You can press that, or if you want, just press H on the keyboard. This will bring up your heat map. This is crucial to making sure that your zoo runs efficiently. It gives you very useful information like the temperature, the power supply, the water, the negative effect, security, animal welfare, the habitat welfare, guest happiness and staff happiness. You want to make sure that they're all green and not red. And the clever thing about this is because it works as a heat map, you get to see the negative areas on your zoo rather than just like a timetable or a board or something like that. You get to see the entire heat map with everything on it there for you. And that is all of the icons pretty much summed up for all of you beginners that want to play the game. I couldn't recommend this game more to anyone who wants it. I would suggest that you get a good laptop or PC. I personally would prefer a PC because then that just gives you more freedom. You can uh, increase the graphics by a substantial amount. I was inspired to make this video by a load of people in a uh, Planet Zoo Facebook group chat that were wondering what is the best way to go around starting off in Planet Zoo. So I thought this is for you guys. This is for everyone who wants to start playing Planet Zoo because I've said it before, you really need this game. But for anyone who's playing the game and needs some advice, please let me know because I've been playing this game for a little while now. Anyway, thanks for sticking it to the end. I know it's a longer video than normal. Let me know in the comments if you need any more advice on any other games that I play. And I'll see you in the next one.